sa buhay natin bilang mga parents. We all want the best for our kids. Pero minsan, hindi natin napapansin na yung mga small decisions natin make a big impact sa pagpapalaki natin sa kanila. Today, I want to share two stories of Filipino families raising their kids here in Canada. One with struggles and challenges and the other with thriving, respectful, and successful children. And the biggest difference between the two, it's something you might not expect. Hi, this is Sally. I'm a mom, entrepreneur, and a content creator who's deeply passionate about family and values. Recently, I had some eye-opening conversations with two different Filipino parents here in Canada. Their stories really hit me because kahit pareho silang masipag, magkaibang magkaiba ang naging resulta sa pagpapalaki ng mga anak nila. At gusto ko itong ishare sa inyo para makapag-reflect din tayo bilang mga parents. Dag ko bilang mga immigrants dito sa Canada, minsan sobrang busy tayo sa trabaho para mag-provide sa family natin, di ba? I've been there too, juggling work, business, and raising kids. Kaya these stories hit home for me kasi it showed the difference between focusing on material needs versus yung spiritual and emotional needs ng mga anak natin. Story number one, the family facing challenges. So, let's start with the first family. The parents are super hardworking. They've got a full-time job and a side hustle para masiguro na magkakaroon ng magandang future ang mga anak nila. Pero, ang napansin ko, kahit successful sila sa work, their kids are struggling. Nagkukwento sila about their child's problems. May mga issues sa values and conduct. Matigas ang ulo, hindi na sumusunod. At minsan, hindi na rin namamansin. Lalayas na lang bigla. So, as parents, masakit yun, di ba? Hindi ka papansinin ng anak mo na inalagaan mo since bata pa. And they also mentioned why nagkaganon yung anak nila. Hindi daw kasi maganda yung mga influence ng mga kaibigan niya. They don't like their kids' friends. Nalala ko tuloy bigla yung libro na nabasa ko by Jen Maxwell. Sabi niya doon, Peer pressure is often the greatest influence upon the life of an individual. Isa pa, they don't go to church. Another thing they shared was that their child spends a lot of time on their phone and social media. Like most kids these days, the sobrang busy nila sa work, they didn't even realize how much screen time was affecting their child's well-being. At they research ko din ito, and I found out that kids who spend over 3 hours a day on social media are more likely to report feelings of anxiety and depression. In fact, a study published by the Canadian Journal of Psychiatry found that increased screen time is associated with higher risks of developing anxiety and depression among adolescents. Story number two, the family with a positive outcome. Now, let's talk about the second family. Ito naman, similar situation. The parents are hardworking, meron ding business, and they're also trying to make a better life here in Canada. But the big difference is they prioritize going to church as a family. Their kids grew up surrounded by a church community. Naging active sila sa youth groups and regularly attended Bible studies. They created an environment that fostered values and strong character. Yung mga anak nila lumaki sa isang supportive community and their environment played a big role. The people that they surround themselves with ay may positive influence. This reminded me again of the quote from John Maxwell's book, Peer Pressure is often the greatest influence upon the life of an individual. And that is so true. Kung sino ang mga kasama ng mga anak natin, it shapes their values, their behavior, and their overall character. Dahil doon, yung mga bata lumaki na may solid na support system. They learned the values. They had mentors. And they were part of a community that guided them emotionally and spiritually. The parents also monitored phone and social media use. They set boundaries. I asked the parent, how did you manage this balance? Ang sagot niya was simple. We made church, community, and family time a priority. Kahit busy kami. Ang laki nang naging impact. This really got me thinking, ano, bakit nga ba ganito kalaki ang epekto? It's not about having more money or a fancier lifestyle. The difference was having a community that instilled the values and provided guidance. And being mindful of phone and social media use. In short, it wasn't just about 
about the physical needs of their kids. It was about emotional, spiritual, and digital nourishment. Nakaka-relate tayo dito, di ba? Bilang mga Filipino parents, especially as immigrants, napaka-importante sa atin na mapabuti ang buhay ng mga anak natin. Pero minsan, napapabayaan natin yung mas mahalaga, yung values at emotional well-being nila. That's something me and my husband had to reflect on too. Hindi lang pera ang sukatan ng success ng mga anak natin. It's also about the kind of values and experiences we expose them to and how we manage technology in our homes. So, here are a few practical tips that I learned from these parents' stories. First is to prioritize time together. Kahit gaano tayo ka-busy, we need to find time to be together as a family. Simple things like meals, family nights, or even Sunday church can make a huge difference. Next is to find a community. Hindi kailangan maging religious if that's not your thing, pero find a supportive community where your kids can grow emotionally. It can be a sports group, a youth group, or a church community. Next is to be mindful of their environment. Be aware of who your kids are surrounded by. Positive influence lang ang hayaan natin pumasok sa buhay nila because it truly takes a village to raise a child. Remember, peer pressure can be a huge influence, just like John Maxwell emphasized. Next is to set boundaries with phone use. Limit social media use and encourage your kids to have face-to-face interactions instead. Encourage digital detox times, lalo na sa weekends or family time. Next is teach values consistently. Values are caught, not taught. Nakikita ng mga bata yung actions natin, not just the words we say. Consistency is key and we have to lead by example. Next is to encourage open communication. Build an environment where kids feel safe to share their struggles. Create space for them to express themselves without judgment. Next, invest in spiritual growth. Whether it's church, Bible studies, or other forms of spiritual nourishment, let's not underestimate the impact of faith and value in raising well-rounded kids. Kung tutuusin, it's not about having all the answers or being the perfect parent. Wala namang ganun. Pero nakita ko talaga how crucial it is to be intentional in raising our kids. It's about finding the balance. Hindi lang material na bagay ang importante. It's about nurturing their hearts and minds too and being conscious of how technology plays a role in their emotional well-being. Alam nyo, these two stories really opened our eyes. As Filipino parents living in Canada, we face unique challenges, but we also have an incredible opportunity to raise kids with strong values even in a different country. Let's be more mindful sa priorities natin and make sure that we are building a solid foundation not just for their future success but also for their emotional and spiritual well-being. I appreciate your likes and subscribe and please share your own stories and parenting style. I would love to connect with you. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.